Uh, we're joined right now by Columbia University professor of economics and the former chairman of the U.S. Council of Economic Advisors, a Nobel Prize recipient, Joseph Stiglitz, uh, who, by the way, was just two weeks ago in Cairo uh, on several panels and, and spoke at several at different universities. Uh, professor, when you were there, did you have any idea that this was going to happen at all? Did you have any inklings? Yes, uh, the answer is yes. I, I was at a dinner the night that Ben Ali uh, uh, resigned. Uh, they got the message by telephone showing you how connected uh, uh, the countries are. And uh, the, the room burst out in clapping. Uh, the sense was uh, maybe Egypt was next. Um, and uh, I think that... Uh, there, it, the question was how long it would take, uh, but it, would, it, it seemed to me clear that something uh, would happen. What it was, would it take the magnitude of what has happened, uh, uh, was not clear. But certainly, uh, they were wait the people I talked to were uh, expecting something like this to happen. Uh, something like this to happen, and I know you have also warned before that Egypt must reform in order to trickle down some of that wealth uh, from the top tier to the bottom 40 percent who make less than two dollars a day. Had you any idea that this would be the outcome of that lack of reform? Well, the, the interesting thing is I talked to some people in the government and they've been worried about this. I mean, this is not something that they were totally unaware of. Uh, they had been trying to deliver more growth to the southern part of the country that has been very disadvantaged. Uh, they've been trying to put in programs uh, to help the poor part of the country, uh, uh, poor people in the country, but they were, you know, to put it very frank, much too slow. and. The growth has been too slow, so there's a high level of unemployment, mm. uh, uh, and uh, so in that sense, uh, they were sensitive to that there were problems brewing. Uh, I think they may not have been sensitive to uh, the length of time. I think they thought they had more time to fix the problems than they did, and they were very slow uh, picking up the severity of what was at issue. Well, if you were back in Egypt, Professor, what would you be advising the Egyptian government to do right now? Well, I, I think that at this point, uh, they have to open up and democratize. I mean, I think there's just no choice. Uh, I think uh, they've been very slow with doing this. Uh, 30 years, perhaps too slow, uh, but uh, I think uh, they can't uh, resist uh, what uh, is going on. So is such a so powerful force. So uh, I think they ought to follow the what uh, has gone on in Tunisia, right. uh, where they are seem to be in the process of an orderly transition. Uh, to a constitutional democratic government. Right. Uh, they brought back some very good people who have come back uh, uh, to, to help run their economy. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a real sense, what I feel from people I've talked to, a national unity. Right. That's the model that they ought to be following. So, sort of, right, exactly, a, a more orderly. But, you know, what you were, to your point, though, Professor, you know, this 30 years in the making uh, is now spilling out into the streets and this pent up frustration that you can see uh, very clearly on your screens right now. Uh, you know, Professor, the, the one thing, though, that we've been hearing over the last several days is uh, despite these disturbing pictures, despite uh, what we know about, you know, what is going on you know, within the government, uh, um, Egypt is still a very small trading the country. It's very bad. It's very noisy. Professor, can you hear me? Sorry. Okay. No, I can't hear you. It's a very bad connection. Can you want to try to say it again? Okay, let me repeat this real quickly then. A lot of people have said, despite what we're seeing in Egypt, uh, it's not going to spill over into other countries or around the world. Is this going to have, in your view, a contagion effect? Should the U.S. should we be worried about our own economy? Well, uh, I think there is a real risk that it will spill over. Uh, some of the feedback that I've been hearing is a strong 
anti-American sentiment uh, because the U.S. has for so long supported uh, these dictators. And uh, that was a strategic mistake. We bought uh, short-term stability at the expense of uh, long-term interest uh, of our long-term commitment to democracy. And it was particularly but strong when President Bush, where he kept uh, enunciating a belief in, in democracy and then just the opposite. Now, in terms of the global economic impact, it's likely, at least in the short run, to be mostly felt through oil. And it's only when the oil exports get affected that the effect will be become very significant. Okay. All right. So we will watch the price of oil. Uh, Professor, I apologize uh, for this bad connection. I know it makes for uh, not terribly a, a, a smooth conversation, but uh, I appreciate your time uh, very much. Uh, that was Professor Joseph Stiglitz, the former chairman of the U.S. Council of Economic Advisors and also the Nobel Prize recipient there, uh, speaking, by the way, from a Moscow conference.